Alright, 3.1 transformations of quadratic functions. Um, some definitions there about a quadratic function, parabola, and vertex. Um, the form we're going to use, um, please get those in your notebooks on your next available page. We're all in different spots, so uh, whatever is there in your next blank page, uh, provided you put your table of contents for this unit of uh, quadratic uh, transformations. Alright, so we're pretty familiar with transformations. Um, we're going to get a little bit more. Um, formal with it um, as far as the equation we have here. So we have this a value um, that has uh, where it's outside the uh, parentheses of the quadratic equation and um, one where it's inside. Okay, And there will be a difference with, with that value. So let's have a look at, at those. Um, we'll just kind of list them. So here if uh, your a value is greater than one, it's a vertical um, stretch. If you have an a value that's between zero and one, meaning it's a fraction, like fraction like 0 0.5, 0 0.3, um, it's a vertical compression. All right, your a on the also indicates um, your reflection about your x-axis. As I was saying, your A also on the outside uh, indicates your reflection about the um, x-axis. All right, now the A values. Now this is all for the A value here. So let's take all that. I hear this A value. Um, the A value on the other side opposed to this. Um, we have a a being greater than one is a horizontal um, being greater than horizontal compression. If your a value is between zero and one, being a over here, if your a value is between zero and one, that is a horizontal stretch. You can kind of see how they kind of different from the outside and inside. Uh, greater than one is stretch with A outside. Uh, a greater than one is a compression with A on the inside. So it just depends on your reference um, for the quadratic. Um, <clears throat> so a horizontal compression and a vertical stretch does the same thing to the graph. So uh, it can be a little bit confusing at times. So those are the A values um, and also the reflection with the A inside is a reflection about the y-axis. All right, so um, they both have in common, or both, they have um, an, a, uh, an H, which is your um, horizontal um, shift. Or translation to be more formal, and then your k value is your vertical shift. All right, so that's basically it. Um, let's look at some uh, examples here. Uh, describe the transformation of f of x equals x squared, represented by g of x, which is uh, x plus four squared minus one. Then graph the function. So um, we're going to describe them. So uh, one of the things happening here is that it's going um, four units to the left. All right. And then what else is it doing? It is also going down um, one unit. All right. So that's what's happening. Um, <coughs> just wanted to note that if you keep in mind this um, equation, AX uh, minus H squared plus K, if you actually substitute those numbers in, um, you can see why the value here, x plus 4, seems to be opposite of what we think. So if it's plus 4, we think they should go right, but it really goes left. And here's why. Um, we have an a value, which is 1. 1 times anything's not there. There's really a 1 here, okay? but we don't write it. Um, our h value is what number from the equation here, this negative, 
What number would make that a positive? And of course, that's to multiply another negative by a negative. So instead of a plus 4, it's actually minus 4. And that's where the left transformation happens. That's why we look at it and it goes left instead of right because it has a plus. Because it's multiplying by a negative 4. And then k is, of course, um, negative 1. All right, so if you substitute these things in just real quickly, um, g of x equals 1 times x minus a negative 4, square the whole thing, plus a negative 1. So if you fix it up, 1 times anything is itself, so we don't need it. x minus negative 4, x times a negative 4, is actually x plus 4. Square it, and plus times a negative is a negative, so minus 1. And that's how that equation is built. All right, so I just wanted to show that in depth. Um, so we need to graph it as the second part. x and y axis, x, y up here. So it doesn't have to be very pretty, but as best as you can do. So we're going to go left four, one, two, three, four lines, down one, one line. Uh, the vertex is a good spot to use. So um, let's talk about uh, some reference. So let's say we have a quadratic. This is our parent function of f of x equals x squared. All right, and then I'm going to draw my new one, take the vertex, move it over to the left four and down one. That's the transformed g of x equation right here. So this would be my g of x equals um, x plus four squared minus one. All right, so um, going on to the next example. Example two, describe the transformation of f of x equals x squared. That's the parent function represented by g, then graph the function. So we have two here. We have a part a and a part b. All right, so part a, <coughs> let's just start listing stuff out here. So what is the a value? A value is negative one half. Um, do we have an h value? No, it is zero. Do we have a k value? No, that is also zero. Real quick, just keeping this in mind, standard form again. Um, if we actually put the... Um, variables in, um, you can see 1 half times x minus 0 squared plus 0. The zeros are irrelevant, and that gives us the equation of negative 1 half um, x squared, because the zeros do nothing. So a little of where that came from. All right, so, um, so we have a negative. It's on the outside, or a value is on the outside, so it's going to be a reflection about the x-axis, and then we have a 1 half, and 1 half is between a 0 and a 1, so that means that it is a vertical compression, okay? So it's going to widen out, it's going to be compressed vertically. So uh, just a quick graph. X, Y. Um, let's draw the parent function for reference, which you don't have to do, but I'm just going to show it here. f of x equals x squared. All right, so um, how do we show a compression? So first of all, there's no horizontal or vertical shift. So I'm going to start my point there, and it's going to open down. Since it's a horizontal compression, it's going to be wider. So I'm going to really exaggerate this width, all right, just to show that I know it's wider, and it's opening downward. So that is our transformation there. Oh, uh, well, we're supposed to write it out. So what's going on? Um, let's write that. Reflection about x-axis and um, vertical compression. All right. Uh, let's look at example B. Just separate it out here. All right, so um, let's describe what's going on here. This time, that's our A. All right, so it's inside. All right, so if it's on the inside, um, let's list out our variables. A is going to be um, 2, and if you want, you can put inside in parentheses so you know what it is. So A, positive 2A, two, uh, 2 on the inside. All right, we have no horizontal shift again, and K equals 1. All right, so what's happening here? Let's go ahead and just list it out real quick. Um, since 2 is greater than 1, that's going to be a 
um, horizontal compression. Alright, what else is happening? Um, vertical shift up. One unit there. Alright, so horizontal compression and a vertical shift up. Um, so, let's show that x, y axis. Um, let's put the parent function down. for some reference. All right. So um, <clears throat> it's going to come up one. So I'm going to go up one unit. There's my new vertex. And then it's going to be um, a horizontal compression, which is actually going to um, thin out the graph. And it's going to be a thinner Um, parabola. Okay, now remember, horizontal compression is the same thing as a vertical stretch. So um, it's going to look like it is um, being squished. So if you if you squeeze it from right and then from the left, it'll be thinner. So horizontal compression. Um, so there. Uh, well, let's write the function. So this would be g g of x. Oops. Um, equals um, 2x squared plus 1, uh, just to label properly, and this one here is g of x equals um, negative 1 half x squared. All right, so <clears throat> examples a and b for both of those here. All right, so a little confusing. Remember, on quizzes, you can use your notes, so be sure you get this down and bring your notebooks to class. All right, last example, um, building an equation. All right, so let the graph of G be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, a reflection in the x-axis, followed by a translation three units down of the graph of f of x equals x squared. Write a rule for G and identify the vertex. All right, so, um, <clears throat> All right, so um, we're going to say, well, let's look at some things here. First of all, is there an a value? All right, so there is right here um, a vertical stretch, hence there's an a value. Okay, by a factor of 2, so that means a is 2, greater than 0, and if it's vertical, that means that this is going to be on the outside of the equation, all right? So vertical uh, stretch by a factor of 2, um, it's going to become thinner, and a reflection about the x-axis, so not only is it a 2, it since it's a reflection, it's a negative 2, all right? Still a vertical stretch, all the negative does is tell you if it's a reflection. All right, followed by a translation, 3 units down, okay, so that's a... Uh, my k value, so three units, so down is negative three, and then um, three units down, uh, no vertical, no horizontal uh, translation, so h is zero. So let's go ahead and build this equation. If we think of this x minus h squared uh, plus k, then our a value is negative two, x minus 0 squared, because there's no h, and our k is a negative 3. All right, this will be g of x. So let's clean it up. Negative 2, there's no 0, so it doesn't change anything. x squared, and then minus 3. All right, and then this will be our rule or our function for this graph based on the description.